Hello, welcome to this video. Welcome to my channel. My name is Emma and this is my third weekly vlog for the month of October in which I read spooky, scary skeleton books. Um, so far I'm having a lot of fun. So far I haven't read a ton, mainly because I've been studying really hard for the GRE, but this morning I took the GRE and so that is completely off my plate, which is just such good news. I feel so liberated because um, I've been studying for like for months. Anyway, that is done. So now it's time to read. Last week was midterms and this week, because of COVID-19, my school is not giving us the normal week-long fall break that we would normally have. Also, I just showered this one. My hair looks like this. School is not giving us the normal week-long fall break that we would have. And so I have decided to take it upon myself to build a fall break in for myself. So today and tomorrow, I will not be attending any classes and just not doing homework, just doing whatever I feel so inclined to do. With one exception, I do have choir class tonight, but I can't really afford to miss choir class. I don't really have any excused absences, whereas in my other classes, I have three excused absences in each class per term. I have only used one of those in one of my classes, in my Tuesday-Thursday class. So even if I take these two breaks, which I am these two days for break, I will be in good shape with my excuse, unexcused absences and I will have flexibility to take maybe another mental health day or two at some point in the semester. I'm just excited to regroup and spend some time doing things that I really like to do and, you know, just be in just being and living life. The audiobook that I'm currently listening to that I will be listening to this afternoon is European Travel for Monstrous Gentlewomen by Theodora Goss. It is a sequel to The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter, which I read last week. Um, actually, no, two vlogs ago was when I read The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter. Last week I read Three Act Tragedy by Agatha Christie, and I really, really loved The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter. I thought it was a little gimmicky at some points and certain reveals were kind of like, oh really? That's what you're gonna do? Okay. Um, while still making sense at the same time, but um, I really really loved the book. I gave it four stars I believe and um, on Goodreads the evidence shows that the books get better as the series goes along. So there's three of them and I am rather excited. They're not super spooky and they're not thrillers, but they are based and grounded in classic horror novels and they're a sort of manipulation of classic horror characters and the um, consequences of the actions that take place in those original classic novels as well as new um, abduction and mystery stories and murder cases that need to be solved. Um, the characters include, but are not limited to, those from Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, those from Frankenstein, those from the Island of Dr. Moreau, those from the Sherlock Holmes stories, those from Rappuccini's Daughter by Nathan Nathaniel Hawthorne, um, and many many others, also characters from Dracula. And then the physical book that I am currently attempting to read, even though I'm having some difficulty physically reading and concentrating and not falling asleep because I've been so tired, um, is The Sign of the Four by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This is one of the two novels that is located within this edition of the Sherlock Holmes stories. It is the first introduction to Miss Mary Morstan, who um, is one of my favorite characters in the Sherlock series. Obviously she's one of like the few main characters and she's come in recently and how could you not love her? But I love Mary and I love seeing her in this environment as well. I'm not entirely sure what this mystery is about, which is why I think I need to go back and start reading over again. So I may be doing that soon, but right now I'm gonna go get my snack and embroider and listen to my audiobook. So welcome to Tuesday, the second day of my manufactured fall break that I am making for myself. Um, yes, I am wearing just a slightly different version of what I was wearing yesterday when you saw me. I went through shopping with my friends this weekend and when I get new clothes I have a compulsive need to like wear them in days in succession until I've worn all of them at least once and I got two v-neck cable knit sweaters one green one brown and so here we are today is my full day of relaxation i slept in so late after watching hocus pocus last night it was incredible like right now it's lunchtime and i just got ready 
which is just delightful. I really am not looking forward to going to class tomorrow, but we're not going to talk about that right now. Um, so I am making an executive decision with my reading and I'm here to let you know uh, what that is. So for now, I'm going to DNF The Sign of the Four by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, not because I don't like it, but just because I would rather read right now um, Halloween Party by Agatha Christie. So if you will cast your mind back, if you have seen my failed Summerween reading vlog, um, I started to read this during Summerween and I never quite finished it. I actually got halfway through. I didn't realize I was halfway through. I figure if there's anything that's going to be good for binge reading on a day off, it's going to be Agatha Christie because I absolutely love her writing. I love the stories. I love Hercule Poirot. He is my fave. Love him so much. So um, I will either today, I will start where I finish, where I left off before. And if I don't remember what's going on, I'll start over because these books fly so fast. So. This is what I'm going to be reading next for spooky October season. I'm still listening to European Travel for the Monstrous Gentle Woman. I've been saying the title wrong. And it's just great. Now we're incorporating the Orient Express and I'm just wondering if Hercule Poirot is going to show up and there's going to be murder on the Orient Express. I'm really kind of hoping for it because I, I would love to see Theodora Gosses take on that story and how she could incorporate it into, um, you know, what she has going on in this story. But also there is someone we are trying to save in this book and that's why we're traveling on the Orient Express. And so I feel like if the events of the Orient Express took place, they definitely would not get saved. So that's probably not going to happen right now. I am watching... Olivia reads a latte's vlog for this week. It just went up this morning. And my plan for the day is thus. I am going to write a letter to my grandmother, put it in a Halloween card and send it to her. Um, and then I am going to go to lunch. I have a doctor's appointment on Zoom. And then with the afternoon, I think I'm gonna take a nature walk, take my book with me maybe stop and read somewhere along the way. It's so beautiful where I live. Those are my updates for now. Hello, it is a Wednesday night. I just got back from practicing music, I had a pretty chill day. I went um, to class, got up, went to class, and then I did some homework and went on a little walk and had dinner with a friend and practiced and now I'm here. Um, it's about nine o'clock, so I've got some time before it's bedtime. Not too much time, but I've got some time. Um, and I'm going to make my thumbnail for my video that needs to go up today. I edited it yesterday. 
gotta make the thumbnail and upload it. And while I'm doing that, I am going to read some. Um, I am starting over with Halloween Party by Agatha Christie, which is an Hercule Poirot novel. Even for someone who has a relatively okay French accent speaking French, the name is really hard. Um, Hercule Poirot, to say it in American. Um, and this novel is one that I recently started. I got half, about halfway through during the Summerween readathon, but I uh, did not I did not succeed in my endeavors with the Summerween readathon, so I put this down. Um, and I started to try to read where I left off, but I did not remember anything. So this novel is about a teenager's Halloween party thrown for the teenagers by a mother in the neighborhood and the community. And one of Hercule Poirot's friends, um, a crime author, is in attendance, Mrs. Ariadne Oliver, and a one of the young girls says that she has seen a murder. She's witnessed a murder and she didn't realize until recently that it was a murder, and then at the end of the party she shows up dead. She's like 13, so it's horrific and traumatic for everyone involved. But then our favorite Belgian detective comes in to play and saves the day, I'm assuming. This is really good. I just love Agatha Christie, so this is comfort read. This is exciting new read. I am still listening to European Travel for The Monstrous Gentlewoman by Theodora Goss, and I'm still really loving it. It's just, it's so good. Um, the threads of the characters and the plot are wound together so complexly and so interestingly, and the characters have to unwind the threads that are already wound while they are simultaneously getting wound together with other things in brand new ways and so it's just complex and wonderful and awesome and so expertly done so yeah that's all I have to say I just wanted to give that little little sprinkle of an update It is Thursday night. I have three things I want to talk about. The first of which being a little reading update, the second of which being a book haul, and the third of which we'll get to. So first is the reading update. So I am just about halfway through Halloween Party by Agatha Christie and I have officially caught up to and surpassed the point that I had read to previously and I'm really enjoying this story. A lot. The one thing I want to talk about with Halloween Party is that I have read a good handful of Agatha Christie's mysteries. I mean, she has a million, so I have I'm nowhere near finished reading her repertoire, but I've read a good handful, and this is the first mystery in which the central mystery of the story is a is the murder of a child. 
This is also the only Agatha Christie novel that I have read where um, sexual assault or rape is any sort of conversation to do with the murder, which is interesting because the way they are addressing it is a lot more head on than I would expect. They have not necessarily used the word rape, but they have used the word sex crime. And so um, it's interesting to see this in what I usually would consider a very um, stuffy, pious, um, a stodgy sort of manner, like this culture of England at this time, I would consider to be um, prudish in language and concept and not really wanting to engage with the idea that maybe the child who was murdered was murdered for a sexual motive, but nobody that Poirot, the investigator, is interacting with seems to hold back from the idea. Even her mother is um, addressing it as a possibility, which I think is really interesting and it's not what I would expect. And I am not, um, I, and I would never suggest that Agatha Christie was being inauthentic in this because I do think like, obviously she's writing in her contemporary era. So there's no way for me to say that she was inauthentic. It was just surprising because I think even now people are hesitant to talk about those things and address them head on. So it's just interesting to see this being thrown around as a concept so easily. Like it's not being taken lightly in the least and there's no victim blaming happening with the possibility of this having happened, but it's not a difficult or awkward subject for the characters to approach, which I think gives a level of power to the investigation and to the narrative um, to be able to, without awkwardness, um, adequately address all of the different possible motives for the murder. There is always an element in Agatha Christie's stories of uh, Poirot being a sort of eccentric character and the Englishmen and Englishwomen blaming it on his uh, foreign heritage and his foreign ways because he is a, a Belgian man. I do think it gives the story it gives the story a level of power that it's not awkwardly dancing around the topic or the consideration of potential sexual assault for the sake of it being more comfortable for the characters. I don't always find this, but I am finding all of the characters so far, all of the moving pieces in this Christie novel to be incredibly compelling and incredibly believable. Um, and even though some of them have been outed for suspicious activities or suspicious behaviors, I do think that they are all very purposeful and very colorful, um, which I cannot say for the most recent Agatha Christie novel that I read or rather listened to an audiobook, which was Three Act Tragedy. I did not want, like that one nearly as much as I am enjoying this. I will say for an author with such a great mass of work, there has got to be some disparity between you know, the characters and the plots of books like Murder on the Orient Express and then there were none, Death on the Nile, really really popular ones where the characters glitter and they bounce off the page and every moment of the entire novel is intriguing and some of her other works where maybe, you know, it's just a good old-fashioned murder mystery but it doesn't do much for you like I felt about three-act tragedy and I would say so far Halloween party is um is running right down the middle of that sort of binary for me no matter which you're on no matter which type of novel you're reading though Agatha Christie is an amazing author and she's one of my favorites and the second order of business on this vlog clip is my book haul. So I needed to go out tonight because I needed to go to Target and pick up some things. So I decided to make it a book shopping night. So the first place I went was my local bookstore, which there's only one in, um, there's only one in my little college town. So I first went to my local bookstore and picked up a couple of books and then I went out to Barnes and Noble. I decided to pick up the new releases that I wanted to get from the local bookstore to support them and help their sell numbers on brand new releases and things like that. I thought that would be helpful. I don't really know exactly how that works, but I just thought that that would be a good thing to do over purchasing them at Barnes & Noble. So 
here is my bag. Um, I'm sure you can't tell what I got through the bag. I'm really actually glad that my local bookstore does not use like descript, uses nondescript bags because then I can show you the bag. Um, and let's discover together what is in this is so loud. It's a Mexican Gothic by Silvia Morena Garcia. Yes, I have been wanting to read this since I heard about it. I unfortunately missed the Dark Academics book club live show about this book um, because I love the Dark Academics book club. I love their live shows. They're so fun. But um, this is so exciting. This is one of the most beautiful covers that I've ever seen. I mean, the wallpaper detail on the back, I just, I, if you happen to not know, Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia is about a young woman, what is her name? A young woman named Noemi who receives a letter from her recently married cousin who was recently married into an English family. Noemi and her cousin and her family are Mexican, obviously, and so her cousin is married into a rich English family. They're like counts or dukes or something. Um, and they've recently received a very distressing letter from her cousin um, conveying that she feels like she's in danger. There's lots of weird stuff happening with the family. So Noemi goes to visit her and to see what's going on, see if she can help see if she can you know save her or whatever i've heard there's a lot of um horror like creepy horror like um mushroom horror which is exciting love mushrooms um and i'm just so i'm so excited to read this and feel utterly creeped out next coming out of the bag is The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. This is actually me following through on something. Whenever I see new releases on booktube, um, as long as I've been watching booktube, whenever I see new releases, I always get excited about them and write them down and then never follow through with actually purchasing them when they come out, unless it's a Shadowhunter book. But I actually have followed through and purchased The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow, which is a marriage between Salem witchcraft and the suffragette movement, which sounds like it could not be more up my alley. When I was in high school, I played Mrs. Banks in Mary Poppins, the musical, because I did theater, and so um, I have had this sort of obsession with suffragettes since then. Um, in the musical, she's not a suffragette, but I still took some inspiration from the movie because it's a great movie. Anyway, that's not the point. This cover is so insanely beautiful. The background of this one is also lace. So like just super intricate covers in 2020. We love to see it. This is so detailed and beautiful. And I'm sure this seems like the type of cover where everything on the cover means something within the book. And I just have to figure out what it all means because there's a little bird, there's some scissors, there's a snake, there's a needle. There's some bluebell looking kind of flowers, but they're pink. There's some berries over here. I mean, it might not all mean something, but it seems like it does. Um, and this has deckled edges, which I actually tend to like just because it makes it feel so luxurious to me. Um, I am honestly so excited about this book. I've been so excited about it since I heard about it. And so I'm really just, I'm so pumped. Moving on to my Barnes & Noble bag, I am continuing one of my recent favorite reads with both The Vanishing Stair and The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson. And I walked right into Barnes & Noble and I picked these up. I wasn't sure if I was going to get The Hand on the Wall as well because I thought that I would purchase some other books as well, but they ended up not having the two books that I really wanted, which were We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson and uh, The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. They ended up not having either of those and so I decided to get both of the truly devious books number two and number three and I'm just really excited to binge my way through these the rest of the series because I just read truly devious and I absolutely loved it so this is very exciting my Barnes and Noble has a certain table at the front of the store it doesn't matter what time of year it is they always have this table and it is creme de la crime and 
I love this table. They always feature a couple of Agatha Christie, my girl, they always feature a couple of her novels and the couple that they had on there I had already read but then there was one collection of stories that I had never even heard of before and it is The Last Seance, a collection of all of Agatha Christie's supernatural short stories. What? Um, this is just so exciting. I'm gonna take the buy one get one 50% off sticker off, but it's also, it also contains a story never before published in the United States, which is so exciting. Um, so it doesn't look like any of these stories are very long because it's not a very thick book. There are 20 stories in this book. Um, I just want to read everything Agatha Christie ever wrote and so I decided to pick this up. Um, I'm gonna try to be reading this soon, reading maybe two or three stories a day because my mom wants to read this as well as Halloween Party because she's a, an Agatha Christie fan too. So I wanna get both of these done and then mail them back to her um, so that she can read them at home. Hi, mom. I also got a pumpkin spice chai at Barnes & Noble, which uh, nobody makes it like the Barnes & Noble employees in my town. Nobody makes it like them. I don't know why. <laughs> Look at that! So the final thing I wanted to talk about in this clip was I just wanted to show you my outfit. I don't know how well you can see, but this is my outfit today. Um, these are my favorite academic plaid pants, and then this is a new sweater from the thrift store. And then I wore these shoes with it, which was super fun. These are really comfortable. They're crackings. I need to get some real, like real leather Oxfords because I love these. But that was my outfit for today. <laughs> but that is all from me for now. I'm gonna go take a good shower and I will see you tomorrow.
Tuesday afternoon. I just got back from apple picking and lunch and stuff with my good good friends and I'm about to head out for church. I have a few minutes to lay down but I wanted to let you know my book update for today. Um, I finished Halloween Party by Agatha Christie in the car and the last couple of chapters were pretty intense. Um, we avoided a, a near murder. There was almost a third murder and we avoided it and averted the danger and caught the bad person. Um, so I really did enjoy this story. There were a lot of details floating out in the abyss that didn't really come together in any sense until the very end when they all fell into place, which is sort of different. Sometimes you have certain pieces that piece together slowly, sort of like building a puzzle, and then sometimes you just have a bunch of random strands of clues and things that all fall together at the end eventually. Um, and the latter was what Halloween Party was like, and I really enjoyed it, so I'm gonna give it four stars. Um, and yeah, log it into my finished Agatha Christie books. One of my big goals in life in general is actually reading all of the Hercule Poirot mysteries and having them all um, on my bookshelves in the same editions. There are quite a few, you can see the list there. But that's just one of my goals. If not, read all Agatha Christie's work. I don't know. So my mom is also a big fan of Agatha Christie, but she doesn't like the Miss Marple mysteries as much. Miss Marple is the other character that Agatha Christie writes from their perspective, the other amateur detective. And my mom doesn't like Miss Marple's mysteries nearly as much as she likes Poro, so I think I would give her a try and see what I think um, and then I will add her to the goals list as well but for now at the very least I want to read all of the Hercule Poirot mysteries within my lifetime so this is just another one to check off the list and tonight when I get back I am so excited I'm gonna try to have an early bedtime but I am planning to read to start reading Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia I am beyond excited to start this book. So we ended up buying a peck of apples and splitting them between the five of us. I have three for eating and then we are going to build, uh, build? <laughs> bake some apple treats later this week. I just wanted to show you how beautiful these apples are. And this one has plant on it, um, some leaves, but they're just so pretty. Anyway, there we go. I'm back and I am about to start Mexican Gothic and I am so unbelievably excited. The noise in the background is my tea kettle boiling. Um, I'm so excited. <laughs> we want to get a little like breakfast tray to put tea and snacks on to get to like sit in my bed and read. Um, but f I don't have that, so for now, my Victorian poetry textbook is going to have to do. Hello, I'm going to end the vlog here and give you a bit of an update on my initial thoughts on Mexican Gothic. I really love the writing style, I love the prevalence of the motifs. I'm only about 54 pages in, if exactly 54 pages in, so I can already tell that the motifs that are present are very present and I can already pick up on what they are which is great I like that I like when things start off in the beginning and there's no question of what things are going to be I can't wait to uncover the mystery of this family and see what's going on with um, no Noemi's cousin. So far, this seems to have all of the classic traits of a gothic novel. We've got a woman, a young woman, going, going crazy, seeing things, hearing things, falling ill. We've got some very old people um, who have a lot of power. We've got a very old house that seems frozen in time, and we've got some mold. Lots and lots of mold and mushrooms. So, I am very excited to continue with this book as I 
go into my next week. But for now, that is all for this vlog. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. I hope that you are doing well. I hope if you're not, it gets better soon, and I hope that you love what you're reading. Bye, I'll see you soon.